Hello, I'm Dr. Paremba, and today we're going to discuss and demonstrate for you the techniques for examining the thyroid gland. You'll have an opportunity to practice these this afternoon with your preceptors. To examine the thyroid gland, it's very important that you be systematic in your approach and that you be familiar with the landmarks. Those are really the keys to being successful at examining the thyroid gland. Let me start off by showing you the landmarks, and if you'd like, you can follow along with me on your own neck. The first landmark to locate is the notch at the superior portion of the Adam's apple. I like to start there because it's very easy to find in most patients, and what I do then is slide my fingers down the front of the thyroid cartilage till I feel a little soft spot below it. That's the thyrocrico membrane. It's good to know where the thyrocrico membrane is because someday you may need to find it in an emergency situation and it's good to be familiar with its location. Immediately below the thyrocrico membrane is the cricoid cartilage. This is the key starting point for the examination of the thyroid gland. The isthmus of the thyroid gland is located immediately below the cricoid cartilage. So if you can find the cricoid cartilage immediately below it, you know you're on the isthmus of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland itself sits between the medial borders of the sternocleidomastoid muscles. So if you're looking in the area that's bordered by the sternum below, the sternocleidomastoids laterally, and the cricoid cartilage superiorly, you'll know that you're within the thyroid bed and you're doing the examination correctly. We're going to follow a process of inspection, palpation, and then auscultation if necessary when examining the thyroid gland. Because the thyroid gland sits in the pretracheal fascia, it has to move when the patients swallow, so it's very helpful to give the patients a little glass of water and ask them to swallow. So let's start by ex examining the thyroid with inspecting the thyroid bed. I'm going to ask Mr. Rydell to take a mouthful of water for me and hold it, and go ahead and swallow. And what we're looking for is the presence of a large mass or small nodules within this thyroid bed that become visible when the patient swallows. Let me have you swallow one more time. Mr. Rydell's exam is normal. Sometimes it's helpful to use a pen light in order to trans illuminate the thyroid bed. Sometimes this brings out shadows and makes uh, nodules that are more apparent. And you can shine the light from the sides to create some shadows. After inspecting the thyroid gland, now we're going to proceed to palpation. I like to sit behind the patient. I find that most comfortable, so I'll sit on the table right behind the patient. I'll use my landmarks again. I'm going to find the Adam's apple, the notch in this thyroid cartilage. I'm going to carefully slide my fingers down the front of the thyroid cartilage, locate the thyrocrico membrane, then find the cricoid cartilage. I usually start out with my right hand and place two fingers below the cricoid cartilage. Now I know I'm on the isthmus of the thyroid. I'm going to ask Mr. Rydell to take another mouthful of water, hold it, and swallow. And by doing this maneuver, we've now palpated the isthmus of the thyroid gland. If you don't feel anything when you do this maneuver, that's okay. As long as you know you're below the cricoid cartilage, your fingers are in the correct position, and if there were any nodules or abnormalities of the isthmus, you should have felt them when you did this maneuver. Next, we want to palpate the lobes of the thyroid gland. I like to start out by palpating the left thyroid lobe, but you can use the left or the right. I use my left hand, and I gently retract the sternocleidomastoid muscle to get it out of the way, and I slide two fingers around the trachea on top of the lobe of the thyroid. You can usually trap the lobe of the thyroid between your fingers and the trachea using gentle pressure. You notice that I have one finger that touches the head of the clavicle. I do this so that I know my hands are not too high. If you're touching the head of the clavicle, then you know that your hands are not too high and that you're in the appropriate anatomic position. Again, I'm going to have Mr. Idell take a mouthful of water and hold it and swallow. Good. And oftentimes I'll put my hands on top of the sternocleidomastoid again just to make sure there isn't a more laterally displaced lobe of the thyroid gland. So if you can take a mouthful of water, hold it, and swallow. Now we're going to repeat the process for the right thyroid lobe. I'm going to place my fingers on the isthmus, again using the cricoid cartilage as my landmark. I'm going to slide my fingers off the isthmus into the right thyroid bed. 
gently retract on the sternocleidomastoid to get it out of the way, and trap the thyroid between your fingers and the trachea using gentle pressure. And if you could take a mouthful of water and hold it for me. And swallow. And that completes the palpation of the thyroid gland. The final step in examining the thyroid gland is auscultation. It's only necessary to auscultate the thyroid gland when a goiter is present. The presence of a brewy within the thyroid bed and a goiter is almost pathognomonic for Graves' disease, so it's nice to make a diagnosis um, that way. What you'll want to do is place the bell of the stethoscope on each of the lobes of the thyroid gland. And oftentimes you can use the bell itself to retract the sternal clitomastoid muscle gently to get a better fit over the lobe of the thyroid gland. Listen for three or four seconds. If a brewery is present, it'll sound like a whooshing noise or a low-pitched hum. We're going to repeat the process for the left thyroid lobe. Well, that completes the examination of the thyroid gland. It's important to practice, practice, practice. You will not feel comfortable with this examination until you've done it many times. You'll have an opportunity to start practicing today with your lab partner. If you have any questions, please ask your preceptor. They're there for your help. Good luck with it.